What does it take to become an elite 40K player? How do the top competitors overcome bad dice? The Competitive 40K Network presents Art of War Unbroken. Insight into the game plans of the top players on the planet with your hosts, Blake Law and the Art of War Coaches. Welcome back to Art of War Unbroken. This is part two of the episodes. If you haven't listened to part one yet, go and check it out. We had a debacle with the recording, so the entire intro is messed up. I'm just going to let Brad cut right into it, and I won't be in this episode. I got some some stuff. He was letting us off a little bit with if it was LVO terrain. I want to go with the same terrain at first. You're basically, you're resetting this up. If you could play a little bit more harassing, do you think? And could you have blocked a little bit? Because even though knights can, you know, the, the skull, Lord of Skulls can move over things, you still have to end up on it. So he has a really big butt, basically. And do you think you could have screened that out and gave yourself basically two turns to kill all the cultists and the everything around that and played it just a little bit different? Like in my mind, you could have basically stalled this, the Lord of Skulls. And could you have used the angles on the terrain? No one can see me, but I'm using my hands to try to show different angles. Basically, you know, pivoting the terrain to give yourself a little bit defensively and really focus on just more of a delay with the big stuff while you were scoring points and then just utilized it? Was that a, a possibility? Yeah, I think all of those were were mostly possible or definitely possible outside of the terrain. Um, I think they were like longer ruins for some reason. So it was just really hard to obscure. And they were large, but like not in the right way. I, I don't know how to explain it. So you I, couldn't get I know that what you said because LVO does have that could the uh, industrial board that I feel is the same way where it it's really flat and it doesn't give you the good LV kind of angles. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously they have to be four inches apart from each other. So it was just weird. Um I don't think I've had a problem on a true player place ring with being able to hide stuff a lot of the time, but this it was just how things shook up, unfortunately. Um, as far as the Lord of Skulls move blocking or just like positioning where you kind of cut some of their movement. Um, yeah, I, I definitely could have done that with one of the units um, that probably would have, if, if that would definitely would have helped me out, especially if I you know, was going down the route of keeping the Acolyte squad there to do Lurk in the Shadows because um, the Viking was going to get killed anyway um, for the most part. So. Yeah, that, that could have been a good play, but it was like dicey because he had warp time and I wasn't sure which one of the Lord of Skulls he would choose to warp time um, because the way it shook out, either way, whatever which, whichever one he chose was going to get an angle on what he wanted and the other one would just pick up the bikes. So I don't think it mattered too much, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. I was just wondering if you could really drive Rover and make just a big line kind of with those bikes uh, because we know that you weren't going to be able to hide one of them and just really funneling him to whatever side you wanted at that point in time uh, and just basically giving up a flank until you could recapture it. Uh, in my mind, of course, I cannot see the game itself, but just that. Uh, I mean, when you were talking about the uh, secondary choices, you were wondering. Yeah, so, so right before the game, when you look at your opponent's list, you were mentioning a little bit about your thought process on how you wanted to kill everything else, but then you took bring it down to try and get 12 points by bringing, killing the decimators in the corner of skulls. Did you have a master procession for the four up in one on the yeah. corner of skulls? Yeah. So how come you went for bring it down when you, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the winning condition was killing all his infantry and removing his point scoring units, and then you just win on points. So there was no need to kill the lower, the corner of skulls. Whereas taking bring it down, you now need to kill them for your points. Um, that is a great question. Because <laughs> if they pull off the four up Binvon and you're firing the mining lasers at it, if he rolls well on the four up Binvon, just screwed. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Just because of the fact that you can make it into a game where it doesn't matter if you kill anything but the trash at that yeah. point in time. You have so much mobility with the gene stealers and the bikes and units coming in from deep strike, and just hit all his infantry and the things that were going to score points and you score your engage or that g circle secondary you score your rod and you score whatever other secondary you want to take and then you don't have to risk interacting with the corner of skulls on the four up in one because that can bounce yeah so 
Wait, the four pin won't say it goes on the lower skulls, correct? It can. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he, <clears throat> he can do. He can just choose one of the anything basically. He he can put cursed earth on that. And it's a good. it's a six inch aura around the massive. Yeah. He's yeah. He's putting cursed earth. So he's gonna get plus one on uh, uh, basically on all demons. Yeah. Wow. Which will be any of those. That's uh, that is spooky. So yeah, I I think that was more of like. I'm feeling kind of cocky here. Sure. Than anything. Um, because uh, the Ridge Runner shooting for five turns is going to kill his vehicles. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I didn't really care too much because, like, the, the Soul Burners, um, what are they called? Decimators, were pretty easy to isolate. So he kind of keeps them in a bubble around his, like, master possession. Mm-hmm. So, so like, I, all I had to do was just take turns sending Rocket Drill Acolytes into there. Like, I don't care about your four pin mole, and you're still going to take, like, you know, six to eight mortals, and then here's yeah. saves. So I, I figured I was going to do what I was going to do anyway with, like, the engaged rod and then, and then take his points away. And then this was just kind of icing on the cake. Um, sure. Do you have, like, a better suggestion, like, like maybe vital intelligence or vital ground data intercept? I would have I taken data intercept for sure. You're already going to take it. You're going to figure that in that game with that you have, you have just more than he does. And you're planning on taking the primary. You're you're almost guaranteeing uh, three points a turn. What that. did you score in primary in that game? Do you remember? Uh, well, after the dice thing happened, so I'm gonna be honest. Um, I checked out after round two sure. to get two sure. practice matches in into specific matchups. And this was like Lewis, who's like really my, my buddy, and I was like, yeah, I'm not really need to don't need to prep for Chaos Lord of Skulls. Yeah. Um, and I was like, hey, man, I was, I'm going to go to this gym. All you're playing now. He's yeah. like, Kate is just going to play Lord of Skull's entire LVO now. <laughs> you, everybody listening to this, because it's going to be after, you're just going to look up I'm switching my PCP, list. Lord of Skull's every... So how is this even happening? There's like three of the players at the event, and I run into all three. It's going to be the same guy. He's going to have like a fake mustache the next time he plays you. <laughs> I can't wait. I, I, I hope that doesn't happen, but if it does, I hope it goes better and I have better terrain. But I mean, my opponent was a great player. He's, he's a very good player. He's definitely one of the big hitters down here. Um, Before Blake steals it from me, in your list, so... <laughs> <laughs> what? So we could, we could actually have it in real time. What was your MVP unit over the weekend? And what was, what's on the job? Yes, they, I, damn Steeler, Steeler of Souls. <laughs> um, the MVPs are definitely the bikes and the rear runners. I think um, it's just you can do so much with them, and they don't they don't like break the game wide open for you, but they just kind of do all the little neat things and position and block and all that stuff to let you set up and win. Even when you can throw them away, like and so you can get an extra turn of bridge runner shooting without them getting touched, it's just and yeah, the bikes are definitely an MVP. Um, the cutting block, I've actually thought about this, and if you could edit LVA list, I probably would. I think the icon ward gets dropped, and I mean that's neither. I don't know. I'm I'm undecided because like bringing back all these models is kind of like what the list is leaning into, but I felt like the bikes were just so durable. That I didn't really necessarily need to start bringing them back. I think a Kelomorph, just having that like that relic worm tooth round, and just having him firing and fading and, and dunking on stuff like the mid tier, mid range. Uh, so game. annoying. Nice. Yeah. Still fire that is fading so broken. Well, the funny thing is, is that people don't even know that he does that anymore. That's another yeah. thing we had to look up. Kelomorph comes in. He's one of the few units in the entire game that can deep strike and then move after the deep strike. He breaks the rules. He's, he's so good. Eight t- t- gives re rolls now. With mortals. <laughs> he has the opportunity for mortals. He does mortals? Yeah. On sixes. Oh. Yeah. Not, they, he, not with the relic ground, but with the standard. Not with the relic, not with the relic ground. Sorry. With this, if you're using just standard, if you're not putting anything on him. Yeah. But he's at three shots, and if every hit explodes, well, for another sh- a chance at the shot. Right, so it's like six shots basically because he hits on twos, and then he auto gets crossfire. No, he does not. I, I mean, I'll have to re- just verify so that I'm not talking my butt. So that's my issue with the relic one is it's, it goes to heavy one, uh, where if you don't have a crossfire marker on there, you're hitting it th- on threes, which just like significantly dunks your damage. Yeah. Um, but if you have the crossfire marker up, he's great. 
Yeah. So what are your thoughts on the Army going into LVO? I mean, we've talked about the tournament a little bit. We talked about some things you could have done. Tell me about your general, like the feel. This is a new Army. It just came out. You're obviously trying to get your reps in with it. So what are your, your you're taking a more shooty version of than this than a lot of uh, the I've seen so far. Tell me kind of what you're, what you're thinking about going into the matches with, you know, you've got uh, Crusher and Thick City. You're going to see for sure orcs, things of that nature. What are your, what are your thoughts taking the things that you have into the, into the list? Kind of walk me through like why you took some of the, uh, the particular units. Yeah. So this list was kind of tailored for like the stuff I was going to expect to see where every game, like obviously like I was first drawn to the Twisted Helix MSU melee build, which is super strong, but I just felt like in the Crusher and Thick, um, and the Custodies and stuff, I was like, man, it's not, it's just not doing enough. And then I'm giving up grind and I'm giving up no prisoners. And I just, every game I felt like I need more shooting because like they, that's what they buffed the army with. It's like, here's plus one hit, plus one to wound, like army wide, like. Ridge Runners were the best thing holding up the GSC in 8th edition. Like, you know, they only got better. They got access to stratagems for full, full hit rerolls. And, you know, they got a 6-up invul and they minus 2 charge, all this stuff. So I I don't think... I think I'm going to win a couple games because no one knows the army does. Um, more so than if I brought, like, a melee list. Because it's like, okay, cool, like, you have tricks, but, you know, you're just a missile melee army. Like, you're still paper thin. Um... And this this list is like weird. So I need the big issue with GSC is you don't have a good third secondary. Um, so I sneakily built into the last where I can hide it. And then this list actually doesn't give up grind, which is really really weird for a GSC list where your opponents can be like, oh, it's GSC. Like you know, I've seen some bat reps, or I know what this does. I'm gonna take grind them down because they're pretty, you know, paper thin. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, I didn't kill, you know. 15, like two units of bikes. I didn't kill any MSU units because the MSU units aren't on the board. And it's like all of a sudden you're like, you go from thinking you're going to get 12 to 15 on grind. And it's just like, no, you get maybe six. Mm. So I can control a lot of the shooting, a lot of the engagements with how fast it is. And I don't have to take casualties on the way back, uh, whether that be from fire or uh, return to the shadows. Um, I also expect to win a couple games just because the list is tailored for the big meta standouts like, such as Thick City and Crusher, um, where I've gotten really comfortable with those. So um, I don't, I don't know. I would love to make uh, day three if I if I play it play it right and I don't get too uh, intoxicated uh, and don't sleep. But it's going to be interesting to see because I don't, I don't think the list has any straight up bad matchups. I mean, everyone's raving about Custodes. Um, so I'll have to see more about that. I'm sure in the hands of a great player, it's terrifying. Have you had a chance to play against the Custodes? Have you had a chance to play against the Custodes? I've had two games in the Custodes. Um, they felt fine. I just felt like I had too much stuff on the board. Um, and they didn't have necessarily the volume a lot of the time to to get through everything. Because like, Custodes hitting on threes and wounding on threes is less exciting than hitting and wounding on twos and twos. Um, and then it's a lot of damage too. So into the bikes, I have a six up feel no pain. Um, so it cuts a lot of that. And then like the melt lances and stuff, like, I don't care if you kill two bikes. Um, and I have like the tools to turn, like turn off their trickery, like with, without like turning off auras, turning off, uh, I do, I do think the GSC is actually, uh, a really good match for custodes just because of the fact that you can dance around them. Because the biggest thing is customs is their durability and their tricks when you get close between tangle foot, turning off rerolls, you know what I mean? Making your minus two to, <clears throat> by the way, in custodes, the, the craziest thing that people don't talk about enough is minus two to pile in and consolidate. That, oh, yeah. that, that is just broken. That <laughs> hurts sparks so much. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. But like you can just you can just dance around that. So I don't think it's a bad matchup, but I do think it's uh, whoever blinks first or makes the the first uh, spacing error uh, will actually have a hard time. Did you think about taking in this list right now? You've got so much shooting and stuff. Uh, what do you re what do you end up relying on for your hand to hand? Are the drill units doing most of the heavy lifting? Uh, pure strains, obviously, just with four attacks base are always just going to be doing good. And the fact that they're straight AP3 all the time means everybody's to their involved, which is just crazy time. Uh, do you find that, that you harass more with those 
or are you actually bringing them in as part of the the big damage when you go in? Okay, so the pure strains, most of the melee I almost treat as just counter punch for the most of the time, except for the three to six charge unit drills. Um, on cert, like on face value, the list doesn't look like it has a ton of melee, but when I'm able to recycle units essentially and put them back in a deep strike after they kill something, um, I felt like that's all I kind of needed. A lot Tell of everybody that's because that's actually like crazy because yeah. getting multiple activations with a hand to hand unit, because most of the time you go, oh, you killed my screen, you killed one unit, and yeah. then I'm going to deal with you, you know, now. You can't do that against this GSC army. Tell us about how that strat works, because a lot of people just don't know. Okay. So in the movement phase, you can spend one CP to put a unit back into deep strike. Okay. Or after a unit is finished making its attacks, if it's not within six inches of an enemy model, it can now be placed back into deep strike, and it'll come in the following turn outside of nine inches yeah. of the yeah, enemy model. Nine inches or eight inches? Nine. It goes back into deep strike, not underground. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's still just so. Anytime you can get multiple activations with a hand to hand unit, though, that's just oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah because now, now you don't have to worry about sending a combat unit to kill like a flanking unit scoring points or holding an objective. You go kill it and you haven't treated your unit because your combat units are, you've invested a lot of points and they're, they're your hard hitters. And you're not trading that unit for some random 10-man guardsman holding an objective. You you kill them, you bounce out, and you can recycle them. It's it's brutal. Yeah. And then you got and then you've got that threat where they now have to respect their board edges again, you know, everything else. So it's like a double-edged sword at that point in time. Because mm -hmm. not only did you not waste it, but it it's a threat now coming in. So they have to res yeah. you have to respect it with the way you're doing your movement phase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just just being able to to come back in and just even even though you know a lot of the time when I bring them back in, they don't do anything the following turn. I'll stage them behind a ruin. I'll have them drop and do rod. But the, the following turn after that, that's a whole nother combat unit that you have to go send assets to deal with while you're getting shot at and harassed, and you're not pushing into me because the bikes usually control up enough space. So it felt like the right amount of melee in the list. The pure strain, the five man pure strain break, I'm questionable on. But a lot of the times when I was testing out Helix, like I'm sending like some melee units in, but I feel like I'm not sending that many melee units. So I had like a bunch of stuff kind of just sitting around for a while, and I didn't like that feeling. Um, instead of trying to shove everything in your opponent's face, which is something I usually don't try to do with melee lists, but I like this. I like it. Feels like the right amount of melee to have, and that can kind of operate with everything else going on. So, cool. I got a question for you. What is the mistake you find yourself making the most it's a weird ass question no it's just I'm, I'm just thinking about this it's such a complex army you're talking about the shooting elements the combat elements where are you trading your units which units are going to reserves and so on so i'm just curious like what mistake do you make the most often um that is actually a great question um i think overall Sometimes I get a little too weird with the bikes. Like I don't make the correct decisions. So that's a that's a common issue I have. I think the glaring issue that I've, I've had over my couple games with this list, I think it's like CP management early, where I, I have this tendency to just blow my load like right away <laughs> on stuff that I don't necessarily need to do. Because uh, you have so many good one CP strategies, you're just like, I'm going to do this. They're auto advancing six. I'm throwing six demo charges. They're a plus one damage. Yada yada yada. Yeah. So like, I mean, I specifically start. I didn't take an extra relic because I wanted to start at ten with the option to start at nine to hide a secondary, and I felt like that was the right amount. Sure. But I, I I need them later on in the game, um, so I need to control my CP management early. I think that's something that's a great point. I think a lot of people struggle with CP management early game because having the ability to interrupt or auto pass a morale or reroll yeah. a charge on turn four, turn five will win you a game. 100%. I mean, yeah. just the, the threat of that 2CP sitting there sometime for an interrupt can change the exact way somebody comes yeah. into you in a charge, in a, in a melee, in a fight phase. Yeah. And now you, you with the, as you said, you have so many 1CP strats, like having that extra CP turn five, you went second, you just advance a unit, toe in. You shut off their heroic intervention and you score your max primary. Like having that ability late game is super, super good. That's something to keep in mind for sure. 
how if you would guess like how, if you were guessing how your list would look in a, a couple months with obviously the meta is going to be changing but like you've only you know total even to be in the book how much do you how close do you think is this to the secret sauce are you 60 percent 70 percent 100 percent you know where do you think that this list is the close the best can of bigs list that you could put together for gsc right now I think this is about like a 79%, 80, it's between 79 and 85%. Um, like just right off the bat, knowing that there's two units that I kind of want to change already. Um, I don't know. I, I think that there's going to be some secret sauce to be discovered because every time I reread the book, it's like I find something new and I'll message Sean or somebody. That's, and that's how, it's, I'm not going to lie. That's, that's why I threw that up because – Every time I look at this book, we've been saying that I actually think Custodes is going to do probably the, get the better representation of LVO, but I think that GSC is actually the stronger codex for the long run as far as and everything else. Because I think you kind of look at Custodes and go, all right, it it's this basic kind of kind of build. Emperor's chosen, go go yeah. ahead. And yeah. then GSC, you're like looking at these 15 different options going, I don't know how I'm going to put all these in one army, yeah. but... <laughs> And I think to add to that, we're about to get the new missions in the chapter approved. And I think to your point, Brad, you have so many combos and so many units, like you're going to be able to look at these new missions and find the tools and find the tricks that are going to play these missions the best early on before 100%. everyone else figures out how to play them. Yeah. All, the thing oh, is, yeah. is that with those released, all, all the new missions favor uh, having more infantry, having more, for sure, OPSEC. You can only do sticky with now with obsec with objective yeah. secured. So there's a ton to be said for this army being able to just manipulations. I 100% agree with that. Good times. GSC becomes, I feel like, a lot better once this drops because you get teleport homers, which just feels like a better rod um, with the with the update. You get the mental interrogation doesn't require line of sight now. That's so, huge. I, so many people yeah. slept on that. It's gigantic. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and then all the missions themselves encourage having cheap obsec, like they can also punch, and uh, that's just all things that GSC does well. Weird question: How does mental interrogation currently work with your ability to ignore range and line of sight requirements on psychic power for CP? Ooh, ooh, he wasn't ready. I'm not ready either. I'm like, I'm like grabbing. Ooh, the book. Who's gonna? <laughs> I think it's got to be a blessing. The the ignore oh. whatever it has to be a blessing spell. Okay. Yeah, that's not, don't, yeah, that's not going to happen. Also, so about to look that up, I'm like, I'm on one corner of the board, you're on the other. I'm about to mentally interrogate that guy. I'm 70 inches away. I don't really care. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, Brad, I got I got something you might like, a um, little five-man. So after this, I kind of want to experiment with some Blade Cog. Uh, they, it's not, nothing crazy. It's six up in ball, and you get a wound reroll of turn, and then you get plus three inches on your stuff. But what I found... Is, so the biggest strategy I use a lot of time is overcharge battery, overcharge weaponry, which is essentially plus one damage to ranged weapons, uh, industrial ranged weapons. Um, what I found is the wolf quad flamers are industrial weapons. So you can kind of build your own rack with fire squad, these little five-man death squads, where you put a demo charge, six damage three charges that are plus one hit, plus one to wound, and you'll throw like a wolf quad flamer out that's also now damage two, plus one to wound. Uh, ignoring cover it's like pretty cheap i think it's like 70 some points um so if I, I decided to go away from the biker fan list like three by five of those just sounds like that's like a lot of damage for nothing too i love that for i love nothing. that idea yeah wow yeah, i just think that there's so much of this this is why I, I was excited to talk about gsc in the the podcast today just because i think that there's there's so much to be talked on and your list was different in the first place and i know that you're still working on it, basically. That's that's the crazy thing is, is this feels so good, and you're like literally going, eh, "I'm 7985." You know, I'm not I'm not done with this. This is I like, bet I bet you're 30. percent I bet it's gonna look completely different in two weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, I wasn't even taking into account the new missions and stuff for yeah. sure. Um, I like the rock grinders a lot too. The the trucks with the I'm in love with rock grinders. I love throwing. Because they also have capacity stand there. And the fact is, is that I don't even care about their gun as much. You're like, they have eight attacks. <laughs> Straight eight. That's yeah. just nuts. 
Yeah, like this little yeah. vehicle All this just stuff trash. Is weapons too. So you can throw that 2d6 damage and then make a damage two flamer on there and then throw the, the cash demolition charge, demolition charge of damage three for six of them too. So you go up and you can just nuke something in shooting and then go punch something real hard. <laughs> What are you guys' thoughts real quick? We've got we've got a lot of big stuff in the metal right now. We've got Thick City, we've got Crusher, we've got uh, some of the orcs, just, you know, the big with the, the skill rigs. With the change in the missions, uh, what do you guys think that, is the meta going to change drastically right away? Uh, it's obviously going to change some, but do you think that the missions are going to change the complete landscape? <laughs> just one-shotting everyone. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that. What do you? Th- I'll go around the ar- around the screen that no one can see but me. Uh, Jaime, what do you think? So I think obviously we're all gonna try and use our current list with the new missions because we have the reps with our lists and see how what works, what doesn't work. So I think we'll have a month or a couple of tournaments where everyone will just use these twenty twenty one lists, and then then I think people are gonna start trying complete new builds because like Tau with the shooting is great but like there's a lot of really good shooting lists in terms of uh, firepower output out there so i don't think Tau are going to force us to change immediately i think people are going to try using their lists see what work what doesn't and then they're going to make new lists that's what i think that's what i'm going to draw I'll trickle on that what do you think on that canon do you think it's going to be kind of a, a fast thing or more like Jaime saying with slow basically slowly the bet is going to change so my immediate impression is i think thick city becomes less thick like right off the bat like as soon as the lbo is after um just to have more like you know witches or five-man rack squads and all that stuff in there just to do um, that kind of thing uh i don't i think tau stops people from bringing like less big stuff like maybe you see less crusher eventually I still think it's like such an easy army to just put together and play that people are just going to show up regardless of Tau existing. Um, I think it will take a, like a month or two. I don't think people are immediately going to be like, all right, I'm bringing more, you know, three or four my, five man troop squads right off the bat, cutting this from my list just because of new missions and secondaries. I think uh, Jaime put it pretty, pretty well of like people are going to try to see what works with their current list, yeah. but it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, like don't like don't get me wrong. Like I'm putting two Wolfen squads into my lists just because one, the strength ten Thunder Hammers to help me with custodies because I'm currently really struggling with custodies. But in terms of the mission, I'm gonna still try my triple Wolf Guard with my characters. I'm just switching out a couple of units to put in a couple of Wolfen, especially because it looks like the missions require you to be able to jump onto an objective and clear it and stop your opponent from taking it. So the Wolfen fighting on death means I can get charged, that's, that's die. Such a huge thing. Yeah. I love Wolfen in this meta, by the way. Yeah. A lot cheaper. The, the thing about the Wolfen, I love anything. It's the same way I like uh, the GSC, the the metas, because you can deny like a stranglehold. You, you know, especially a player plays terrain, because you hide where somebody they can't they can't shoot you. They have to charge you, and then they die. They sudden hit them on the fight, and all of a sudden they control two, planning on taking that third objective after they cleared you, and there you murdered everybody. Absolutely. Oh, here, here's a here's a mean thing you can do with uh, GSC as far as fighting back. So you can do this. Um, this is this is I've been doing this on Crusher Stampede specifically. I know we're kind of getting off topic here, where you take the ten man unit with the drills or whatever. You base the model with a single like BS acolyte model, and you put your drills half an inch behind there, and then you base the big monster with like some crappy character like a Nexus or whatever. Use overcharge batteries again, which in combat will do mortals on ones to you. So you pull that one model basing, you do all your rock drill attacks, and so if they go to fight on death, they're just going to go into like some crappy uh, character that you don't care about anyway. That's actually pretty funny. That's cool. <laughs> Killing the model as an engagement range, that's cool. Yeah, so another way for you not to get fought back there. No, that's, that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Oh. The, the 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 only thing that I'm scared of is uh, Nids with all the Dev Gaunts because they just will pick up the bikes and whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double sixes. I was, actually, I, I was actually more. I was surprised that we didn't see more forces of the hive mind because that is like a great equalizer. For instance, like Manny just uh, won Nottingham with the 180 rack list, and like Devil Gaunts just 
it instantly incinerates that list basically and goes, uh, you had racks, right? Uh, just a minute ago, I swear to God, there was racks in the yeah. table. Uh-huh. And they can't get to you. Is he running that list? Yeah, is that, is that- he's running it. All right. Yeah. He's he 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 basically uh you know beats David I don't know what uh, kind of contract he stole his soul from he made him paint 120 racks in like three days uh, uh, I don't the Manny can't run Manny lists without David but painting that stuff for him it's funny what's your take we actually you know what I want I oh. want predictions I want predictions from both of you for LVO just you can do it uh factions I want both of your top eights. Oof. Um, I don't have to do people, just uh, just the the factions. You know what I mean? Custodians are going to be there. I think there's going to be two custodians in the top eight. I think there's going to be one crusher. One crusher, sure. I don't see Thick City getting all the way up there. Everybody I think everyone's space. teched into it. I think they're going to make it into the top sixteen for sure. Like they might be like three in the top sixteen, but I don't think they make it to the top eight. I actually think one that crusher. MSU and Dark Eldar could make it to the top eight if we have more of those. The old school lists, yeah. I agree with Brad. Yeah. So um, two custodies, one crusher, one MSU Drukari. So that's four. Okay. What are the dark horses? What are the the wonky lists you think might? I, I actually I yeah. don't like dark horse in here. I just think because we're playing battle lines followed by scouring, I think that Black Templars have just like a oh. a really good chance because they have that five up invul and they have against Fiona you know, Pay. You know what I mean? You, you just have so many bodies that are durable, and they've got the big shoots because they put in the heavy melter rifle eradicators and stuff. Sure. But it, I, it's, it'd be, it just because of the missions themselves, they can just push in and just score a lot. It, because you got to figure that five and six is the, the real telling missions. You know what I mean? You're going to play your hardest matchups on those two ma- missions. So. Yeah. Day two, day two is going to be rough. It's going to be a lot of upsets on day two because the scouring in the middle and then battle lines and then starting with vital, like it's. A lot of lists that's supposed to do really well when you get those Dawn of War missions halfway through a tournament and that can pick you up through rounds three and four and just get you to round five undefeated. Like those are gonna be some huge upsets in those three missions there. I mean, battle lines is such a nightmare. And it's such ways. you're like, hey, I'm playing knights on battle lines. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Do we know do we know the mission play uh, for the shadow round? Is that announced or I think it is. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I just know we're playing the uh we're playing all the good missions on day three. However, yeah, oh my I'm not 100 percent in the shadow. I'm so <laughs> sad. Super and clear on day three. It's like, damn it, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> it's my favorite mission. But yeah, back to the top eight. So we had the two custodies, we had the MSG Jukari, I, I don't had think Crusher. The eight. I don't think any granites make eight. No? No. Man. I think the only way granites kind of could compete on all this nonsense is going leaning towards like silver tide. Um, outside of like the dreadnoughts have just been just like they don't do what they did when they initially like pushed out like thick city doesn't care about their shooting um, most armies really don't care about their shooting right now and they don't have the volume like sure and this is what they what they once were and i think a lot of people have adapted by like throwing like ap ignore ap one and two in lists or going with harm higher armor saves and touch and cover like they don't do what they, they the, the minus one damage is a big deal on that too because you're not getting yeah. as much to this i can and the psychic amp- amp- amplification just doesn't do a lot because you just go, cool, you went to two damage and you're back to one. Yeah. Do we see any Marines in the top eight? Iron Hands are currently the hottest Marines. Iron Hands, it depends, man. Uh, I don't know if they can make it through the uh, those last two missions, though. I think you're going to do really well, and then they're going to bounce because they, they have to come out. It's a strong army, don't get me wrong. yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I actually would put your Space Wolves in there as the Dark Horse because you get you have a really good matchup into the other big stuff with your big characters, just monster match, really. And the thing is, are you taking the uh, the missile launchers? The missile launchers on... The long fangs? Did you take the, no. that unit? Okay. I, I brought in a 10-man intercessor. Got it. Just for volume, either way. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it pumps out 60 shots. It eats through Talos. Uh, just because the AP one and especially Kronos as well. So the Talos, the Talos are the side for a melee bag and kill him in combat. It kills Kronos and it kills Nids and Orcs. Because I've got the plus one of wound litany on the chaplain against closest visible. So if I can get a couple rounds of shooting out of those guys, like they do work. 
The weird list that I'm, I'm wondering how it's going to do into this meta is the uh, army of renown for Death Watch, because it does have a billion shots, but it's all 18 inches. So you basically go, I'm shooting you, and then stuff's happening like real close. So yeah. it's real matchup dependent. We haven't seen her in any top threes, have we? I don't think so. Well, I, I was just thinking about it into just into the meta. It's sure. it's so weird to me right now. Because I, I love what's going on a little bit into, into this particular meta because there's a lot of Scissors Paper Rock. Because there's yeah. certain armies that just smash certain armies, but then they lose to a, you know, a completely other, and it's who faces who. And it's so, and again, we know that we're playing battle lines followed by scouring. That changes just everything. You know, if we were playing two normal missions at the end, I would I would be very confident going, I know, I think I know who's gonna be in the top, but you know, play those back to back. I just have no idea. Mm -hmm. I think an admic might sneak in there. The hotels just mass shooty list. Um, like a like a horde admic. No, it's like triple onager to the chickens, triple um, indirect fire things. It's got a unit list, punchy transhuman robots, and then one brick of vanguard that can solar flare. Yeah, Mark Hurdle will might carry that to the top eight. Yeah. That, I mean, still, that still got some serious damage on that too, and it's annoying because he does have a lot of models still. Yeah, I actually think that Admech is ridiculously under song. They, I mean, they did they went down in power level uh, with the nerfs, but like it's not like the army got bad. Not but at all. It's still really, really good. Like we're here stressing about Custodes and Jigsaw Cole, but like Grey Knights is still there, Jukari is still there, Admech is still there, like. <laughs> the, the, the good armies two months ago have not changed. Like what you just listened to? Check out Art of War and the Art of War Down Under podcast on the competitive 40K network. The Art of War 40K.com.